Hello. I feel like this is something I have to talk about. Um, people get obsessed with human design, and I noticed this even when I was really into human design. Even when I was looking at it every day and doing all this work with it, I was still making videos about how people are really kind of freaking out with it. And it's, they're trying to use it to explain everything and they just can't let it go. And, and it, it, the, the, all the stuff about the not self and telling everybody they're lost as, as if you have the answers and nobody else does. You know the truth and everybody else doesn't. If nobody finds their human design, then if people don't find their human design, then they're, you know, and all this judgment and stuff and really wanting to regiment the whole world to, to your human design obsession. Uh, it's just that people are turning it into another religion, another arrogant religion that's, that demands adherence and is very quick to judge, very quick to judge if you don't follow their mandates. If you don't do what they say, if you don't do what Ra says, if you, you know, and ever since, uh, even right from the very beginning of getting into human design, I noticed that there was a serious problem with this. And I've tried talking about it for years and I've tried getting through to people. Like th there, there, are some pro there are some serious issues with this. But it, people are just so, they're just, you can't make them not obsessed with it. That, that's what I've noticed. Like I've tried, man. I've tried my damnedest to make people not so insanely obsessed with human design to like fucking just get over it, get over it already. And it just doesn't seem to work. <laughs> They're gonna be obsessed. Um, it's like, it's just something that's gonna happen. This makes me think that about, this makes me think about how the great waves of change that the new message talks about how that is necessary that's like a real necessary thing that humanity needs now we need to snap the fuck out of this fucking obsession and the self-obsession it's just you're just you're like a like a hamster on a wheel and it just it never ends and it's never gonna end it's never gonna end until you are really snapped out of it Nothing else is going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Nothing in your fa nothing in your life is going to do it. Nothing really. I mean, I've got snapped out of it. I got snapped out of it. I'm not obsessed with human design. But good luck. Good luck trying to, you know, wake other people to fuck up because it just ain't going to work. And they want to reduce everything down to human design and Every time they speak, it's like, no, that's my 18. Yeah, it gives me license to be an asshole. <laughs> you know, shit like that. <clears throat> oh, that's my, that's my fifth line 32 talking. It's like, you know, man, I just don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I'm not interested. <laughs> You know, when, you, when you're looking up transits every single day and you're like, oh, this completes my, my 2838 channel, which means I'm going to struggle today. Come on. I mean, seriously, man. Stuff like that is just... I just don't do that stuff. But some people really are every day. And <laughs> I don't know. And... For me to even say, like, my experience is so far beyond human design and I don't need human design, people just don't want to believe that. No, oh, human design is everything. Human design explains everything. How can you be beyond human design? You are human design! <laughs> oh, gosh. 
you know, meeting people where they are can kind of make my head spin because it's like, I want people to just, you know, get beyond being stuck and going over the same shit over and over. That's just like a broken record. It, it, but they, they're, and they think it's going somewhere. <laughs> when, when I just see like after years, it's like, yep, they're still obsessed. Yep, they're still obsessed. They still think this is going somewhere. They're solipsistic. They think just life is about endless entertainment and selfish, uh, selfish, uh, you know, pleasure seeking, mindless self indulgence, impulsive behavior. That I mean, that's another thing with human design. It, it glorifies impulsive behavior that your body is more intelligent than your mind and that your mind should just be flushed down the toilet and you should just become impulsive on every level and not have any higher faculties uh, help, helping you make decisions at all. That's, uh, that's one problem. That's part of the reason why people in human design, they're just really, uh, they're, they're kind of gluttonous when it comes to their sense apparatus, which is the body and it's just how you're supposed to be moving through the world. They think you're just supposed to gorge. And that's the only meaning of life. That's it. You know, just gorge, just be happy, just, you know, <laughs> live correctly, which means what? What does that mean to live correctly? It means you never listen to your mind. Th that shit just doesn't make any sense because there are, say there are, there's heroin addicts, heroin addicts and alcoholics and cocaine addicts who might have a defined sacral and they're getting a big aha uh -huh for drugs every day. They're getting a real big aha uh -huh in their body for cocaine every day. But while at the same time, their mind, their actual mind is saying there's something wrong with this. I know I should stop. I know I should stop. I wish I could stop, but I have a physical addiction. Right? This is a perfect example of how that shit does not hold up. It just doesn't hold up. The body should run your life and your mind should take the back seat. You know, there are a lot of people who have changed their lives by, by you know, and guided their body with higher understanding in their minds. You know, that's happened a lot. It's happened with me in my life. You might have cravings. You might have this. You might have things going on. But like to say that, oh, th those are paramount. Your cravings, your indulgences, your impulses. You should get rid of any higher faculties that, that, uh, uh, that, that really filter any of that. You should just be totally impulsive. Boy, you know, I hope that human design analysts that teach this kind of stuff, I hope they don't give uh, readings to, like, pedophiles. You know what I mean? You should just be completely impulsive. Yeah, don't, you know, don't hold back. Hey, you see something, you should just do it. That's your body telling you that you need this. You know what I mean? Or, like, anybody with any kind of obsessive, damaging, criminal tendencies. It, like, yeah, just do it. Don't hold back. That's, that's proper decision making. No, that's not proper decision making. <laughs> that's, uh, it's called impulsive behavior. If chocolate cake ever crosses your mind, that means your body's telling you you need to have that chocolate cake. Okay. I know I need to quit smoking this damn thing, but I'm addicted to it, right? But somebody's going to tell me that's, that's because you need it. Your body needs it. There's something, it's like, okay. See, the, the whole thing with flushing your mind down the toilet in human design is really da damaging and dangerous. Um, and the fact that it's so, it's such a huge part of the teaching is actually tragic. It's tragic and it's terrifying to watch, to be honest. Um, I've seen people go into psychosis with human design. I see people get so obsessed with human design that they're just, they are so far up their own ass with it. And um, that's a big part of the reason why I took all my work away. Because I'm just, all I'm doing is making people more obsessed with human design. That's all I'm doing. 
you know, I see, I, I see a, only a very small fraction of people using human design conscientiously and who can put it down. Actually, honestly, I haven't seen anybody into human design who can use it and then put it down and, and not get obsessed with it. Everybody I see that's into human design is completely absorbed in it, trying to use it to explain the universe. They're posting quotes from Ra that are just insane, as if this is from a sage. This is from a prophet. This is our future. Like, really? I don't, I think uh, Ra had some issues. I don't think he was perfect. He wasn't a saint. He wasn't a sage. He was barely even a mystic. Really. He was not some, he was not very philosophically grounded. Some of the stuff he was saying was absolutely insane. It was just pure, pure insanity coming right out of his own ideas about reality, that he's selling its truth, absolute truth, you know, telling people that autism is purely a mutation in the solar plexus. It's nothing else. Well, if autism is genetic and it's because and it's a mutation in the solar plexus, why are people reversing autistic uh, symptoms with Anthony Williams' heavy metal detox and his protocol to get heavy metals out of the brain? It's heavy metals in the brain. It's not a mutation in the solar plexus. It's not genetic. It's heavy metals in the brain causing this. But people are just going to believe whatever Ra says. You know, Ra also said that in the future, in the very near future, all of humanity is going to look and act severely autistic. And that this somehow represents evolution. You can't see how fucking pure, how just fucking insane that is? Really? People telling me they're a raw purist and they can't recognize how fucking insane this shit is? And I can't, dude, there's so much more. I can't, you know, I, I could go for hours, really. People taking everything way too literally, way too literally. With certain things like, oh, if you have an upper color determination, that means you can eat whatever you want as long as you do it at night or as long as you do it during the day or as long as you do it with headphones on. And that's somehow uh, going to help you lose weight and feel great and have, you know, no. If you're eating pork, egg, cheese, gluten for breakfast every single day, and you got certain viruses in your system that, you know, are taking advantage of a situation, uh, it does not matter how much you try to align with your with your determination. If you try to eat during the day with a with a left fixing six color, it doesn't matter how much you do that. You're going to have problems. It's not going to cure your fucking cancer. It's not going to get rid of your lupus, Lyme, fibromyalgia, endometriosis, all this stuff, all these viruses. You know, it's not going to get rid of that. But Ra was teaching that it was. He even said there's, there's no such thing as a cause for any disease. It's all just in your head. It's all genetic. God, man, this is just uh, tragic. Very tragic. This kind of stuff that's being spread out there, you manifested your disease. It's all in your head. It's because uh, you brought it upon yourself as a spiritual lesson. Okay. All right. You're going to tell that to somebody that has eczema so bad, it looks like they have third degree burns all over their whole body. They're literally living in hell. And you're going to tell them, oh, I think uh, you just need to think more positive thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. It couldn't be viruses in your liver feeding off of a copper, toxic copper, that that Anthony William revealed that's where it, that's where that kind of eczema comes from. There's different kinds of eczema. Uh, so many, there's so much that he talks about that is about what is actually causing these severe chronic conditions, but. No, people are going to continue teaching that it's all in your head and you brought it upon yourself. It's just like spiritual autoimmune. Like the autoimmune theory that your body's attacking itself, which is bullshit. Your body does not attack itself. There are actual things going on. 
They don't know what the hell is going on. So they just say, well, your body must be attacking itself because we don't have a clue what's going on. Same thing in the spiritual communities. We don't know what's going on, so uh, you must have manifested it. You must have manifest, manifested it. That's why you have migraines. That's why you have chronic fatigue. That's why you have endo endometriosis. That's why you have fibroids. That's why you have PCOS. That's why you have, you know, fibromyalgia, lupus, Lyme, RA. That's why you have multiple sclerosis. That's why you have shingles. That's why your hair is falling out. That's why you have eczema. That's why you got Crohn's and colitis. That's why your bowels hurt so much that you were bedridden for a year, that one year. Uh, it's because you, you manifested it. Do you see how insane this is? People that get like so insanely into human design, they, they deny everything else. It's like they just can't, they, they think they found the end and the ultimate truth to everything. They refuse to look at anything else. And they think they have, you know, everybody's number. That, and that, uh, anybody making, leaving quotes from Ra about anything, I just, it doesn't resonate with me. A lot of it just seems like a bunch of bullshit, to be honest. There might be some things in it about the pure mechanics, about like, yeah, okay, I can see how that'll make sense. If he's talking, if he's saying something about the 5720, and it's just a general thing, it's like, yeah, that's, it's pretty self-evident. Anybody that has that channel or whatever, you know, it's just like all this kind of self-evident stuff, but he built a monster around all of this with his own theories and his own ideas that a lot of people are not even going through the trouble of distinguishing. They're not even sifting this stuff out. They're not even filtering it. To them, it's all part of the pure revelation. <laughs> they can't separate Ra's fucking insanity from just the pure mechanics of things. They just, they can't do it. They, and there's too much bleed between those two things. Even shit like strategy and authority, that's not, that's not a, a written in stone. I don't experience my sacral the way Ra said I should. And just because I don't, people are going to tell me I'm not self. People are going to tell me I'm not living correctly and all this shit. It's, it's become a cult. It's a cult. It's a religion. It's garbage. That's why I don't pay attention to it. That's why I, I took all my stuff down. You know, that's why. And I'm even hesitant now putting it back up. I'm hesitant now letting people go back to it because I'm, they're just going to get back on the fucking hamster wheel. You know, every day. It's sad, man. I feel bad for people with kids who are like trying to like make their kids live all like insanely rigid and shit. No, you have to live this way. You have a defined sacral. That means you don't know what you want unless you ask somebody else. So let, let, let me ask you what you want for breakfast and I'll see your sacral response. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. You know, people growing up like that, I think that's tragic. Acting like a bunch of robots. Uh-huh, uh-uh. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I've seen people get so ridiculous with that whole uh-huh, uh-uh thing. It's, uh, it's just kind of funny. It's sad. It's sad, man. You know, projectors like holding themselves up in their houses and afraid to leave and, or do anything because they're not being invited. I've seen that. I've literally seen that shit. And you got all these human design analysts and human design enthusiasts enthusiasts that are totally out to lunch, man. They are in total denial. Total denial as to the damage this is doing. When I used to give readings, every reading I gave was about like undoing the damage of human design. That's basically all it is. Undoing the damage that other analysts and other practitioners or whatever. I don't even, well, I, I think even calling them practitioners is wrong. You know, I, I give a reading to somebody and they're like, I know, I feel, I feel a lot of grief right now, but I don't have a defined solar plexus, so I know it's wrong. It's not self. 
I've actually heard that shit. Like this person was leaving a job that they have been at for five years and they love all the people they work with, but they had to move to another job, like at another part of the country. And they were feeling grief. They were like mourning. And they were telling me, I know I have an undefined solar plexus and the grief I'm feeling isn't mine and that this is my not self and that I shouldn't be feeling grief at all. And I had to spend the next two hours explaining to this person that that is a normal emotion to have, that you've been brainwashed because it wasn't just that, it was other things. Can you see how infuriating this shit can make you? How fucking infuriating it can make you to have to deal with this? That's why I got away from it, man. It's tragic. It's fucking tragic. That people just don't see it. They refuse to talk about it. All these people into human design, they act like they're in, to I mean, they're in total denial, man. They act like they don't see it. The insanity. They, it's like, they act like they just can't see it. No. <laughs> I live in La La Land. I'm living in Shangri-La. This is the true way to happiness.